Hey guys, welcome to this video. Myself Hardik Patel, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the best settings you can set in GH5S to achieve the film look. These are the settings I would recommend to go with to get the good quality result or nice cinematic look uh, in your short films or even feature films. So let's get started. First of all, before you go to the menu options, on top of this uh, GH5S, just change the dial to video mode and then come back to menu, go to menu, under the first option, go here, exposure mode, set it to M. The variable frame rate option is grayed out. Don't worry, I'll show you how to make it, uh, how to activate that. Anamorphic, it doesn't even matter unless you have anamorphic lens and then you go with that, then you can change it to, you know, different settings. But for now, I'm gonna keep it off. Loop recording video off, sync scan off, master pedal level zero, SS gain. Here is the important part. So SS gain operation, I would recommend to go with SEC uh, slash ISO. Uh, but you can set the shutter speed to shutter angle, so angle slash ISO. And if you do that, then here you can have a look. Instead of showing the shutter speed in numbers, it shows the shutter angle, so 180 degree. But if you don't have much knowledge about shutter angle, then don't worry much and go back and straight set it to set a speed so you know like what sort of set a speed you have to set usual calculation for videography is uh, the required set a speed is equal to one divided by two times frame rate so if you are shooting your video in 25 frames per second then the set a speed you need to achieve the nice motion blur in your video is 150th same with the 50 frames per second, the shutter speed would be 100. So, so on, let's go back to menu. I keep it to SEC slash ISO. Uh, another option is WFM slash Victor scope off. Anamorphic display off. Focus transition off or nothing. 4K live cropping, uh, I don't want to go with the cropping so I'll leave it off go back second option under the menu now here recording format so if you are shooting a nice uh, short film or even a feature film and if you really are keen to achieve nice quality result then i would recommend to go with the mov recording format because during the post production it gives you more room to edit in your video Let's set with MOV. I will discuss more about recording format in other session. Recording quality. Now here we go. We have a bunch of options. And you might be seeing or saying that why in your camera is not showing C Cinema 4K 60p and why it is showing only 50p. Just because my camera I set it to NTSC mode and that's the main reason it is showing 60p or 30p or 24p to change from NTSC to PAL or PAL to NTSC or cinematic you know recording quality then go to this fourth setting under the menu and if you go from top just imagine from top I'll go down all the way to three out of five, like um, system frequency here and select that. Under the system frequency, it has three options like 59.94 Hertz NTSC mode or 50 Hertz PAL mode or 24 Hertz cinema, cinema mode. So what are these? So if you are planning to broadcast your video straight to TV, and if you are living in the region of NTSC, then I would suggest you to set your camera to NTSC frequency. If you are living in the region, PAL region, um, then I would suggest you go with PAL. If you are broadcasting straight to cinema live, then I would suggest you to go with 24 hertz. But if you are planning to, you know, 
just shoot and edit and then upload to YouTube or internet uh, or even in cinema later, then it really doesn't matter. So I would go with NTSC for now. Now let's go back to second option under the menu. So here the recording quality, as I said, you have bunch of options, go with Cinema 4K, 10-bit, okay? Why 10-bit? Because 10-bit gives you more room for your video, for your picture, for the colors to edit, you know? So during the post-production, while you are editing your video under the DaVinci Resolve or Adobe After Effects or Premiere Pro, uh, you have like big room to, you know, boost the exposure uh, of your video which are underexposed or bring down the you know uh, shadows from the overexposed picture and the colors also would look much pleasant compared to 8-bit i will discuss more about this in future videos but if you are willing to you know go for a little bit slow-mo style video then this won't hurt it's 8-bit, but if you are properly exposing your video, then should be fine, I believe. You are planning to make a short film or feature film, then this is the most recommended option. Cinema 4K, 10-bit, 150 Mbps with 24 frames per second, 24p. So you don't have to worry about uh, decreasing the frame rates in post, you know, just set your frame rates before in hand think all about it before in hand so you don't have to worry about an in the post production now once i select cinema 4k 10 bit for my short film or feature film with 24 frames per second i'll click select go back once i select 24 frames per second i would go back all the way and set my shutter speed accordingly so because i chose 24 frames per second, my shutter speed would be 150th. So let me set it to 150th, which is good. Now click yes. Now you go back to menu, time code, you don't have to worry about for now. Now continuous AF, you can either leave it on and off, doesn't matter, you know, because for the, you know, filming purpose, you always think about you know, adjusting the focus by yourself rather than re just relying on camera to focus and do the job, which it hardly does. So I'll leave it on for now, but it doesn't matter. Photo style, this is the main thing. So now under the photo style, because Panasonic GH5S is offering Vlog L for free, and it is must recommended photo style, picture style, or picture profile. I would suggest to go with Vlog. If you are keen to, you know, uh, add nice colors in post, I would go with Vlog L. Go down, filter settings off, metering mode. Uh, we have three metering modes. I would go with the first option, eye resolution off, IESO sensitivity. And the video I would not choose any of these so should be fine go down shedding comp off diffraction compensation off stabilizer grid out exterior teleconversion off digital, digital zoom off because I always use the zoom lens to zoom in or zoom out all good go down Timestamp recording off, sound recording level display on because it will be always good if you leave this display on and you would know how much level it is recording to. Go back, sound recording level adjustment, zero decibel, sound recording level limiter on, wind screen, sorry, wind noise canceller off mic socket to mic, sound output real time, HDMI recording output, none, color bars, 
it really doesn't matter which sort of style you choose for the color bar so I just left it uh, left this one on now go back third option under the menu is first exposure just click select dual native ISO settings auto but you can set it to high to big range but I will leave it to auto because it really won't matter it will give you the big range the native ISO in GH5S is 400 and 1600 so keep in mind ISO increments one third EV if you go with one EV then it will jump from 100 to 200 200 to 400 400 to 800 like that but if you go with one third EV then it will jump from 100 to 200 200 to 320 something 320 to 400 400 to 560 something like that extend I extended ISO on just for the sake of you know if you are willing to you know shoot in a dark night then you need the higher ISO if you go further exposure composition reset off AE lock doesn't matter I just keep it to AE lock uh, set AF on half press release off quick AF off eye sensor off pinpoint AF settings none you can leave as it is to mid and display to pip AF assist lamp on focus release priority <coughs> as it is focus switching off loop movement focus frame off AF area display on AF plus MF off MF assist this one usually the default setting is uh, this second one the focus one I go with the first one go down MF assist display full function button set as it is after pressing uh, quick menu preset doesn't matter you can either go with the custom quick menu but I just leave as it is for now joystick settings I leave the joystick settings to focus moment but you can set to function or menu so it depends so you can you know right now if if I'm focusing something like if I try to focus and if I use my joystick I can quickly change the frame to left or right and set the focus to right you know right place go with the next option is operation lock setting as it is focus ring lock off video button on is the red video button so when you leave it on that means you can click the red video button and start recording the video touch settings you can leave it as it is so it doesn't really matter monochrome live view off constant preview off live view boost off vlog view assist as it is picking on always use picking okay that matters a lot um, so what the, what it does is when you are focusing your frame here you can see nice you know focus picking color so let me just show you so when I adjust the focus I click here I can further check the focus and that's it now my frame is in focus where I, I set the focus where I wanted so focus speaking is always important histogram on guideline off but sometimes the guidelines are really helpful so for the one third you know frame I would go like this and set the guideline where I want or if you are willing to go with the preset guideline which is like nine boxes then you can go with this one where you can see nine small boxes and you can set your frame like that as per your requirement
Now it's up to you which which one you are willing to go with. I always use either the first option or the third option. So leave the first option on for now. Video guideline, as I said. So video guideline, uh, you can set if you are shooting the short film or um, feature film on 16 uh, gem 9 ratio, then you can select this one and see your video guideline would be as for the 16 by 9. Mm, center marker, leave it on. This is the center marker. If you leave it on, it will show you where exactly the center point is of your frame, which is kind of uh, good to know sometimes. Highlight on, so leave it on. Zebra pattern, doesn't matter which one you like to go with, but sometimes when you have the frame with the cross lines, then this pattern does matter. So just select the zebra pattern accordingly. Now you can see if I boost the ISO and if the frame would be overly exposed, see this is called zebra pattern. So when this line show up, it means this part of the frame is overly exposed. So I can select and calm down my ISO to require quantity, required number. Now go back to menu, exposure meter on. Yes, I would love to see the exposure meter on the screen. So this is the exposure meter, MF guide on, monitor info display on, video priority display off. Okay, what about the MF guide? So MF guide is where this little square white box if you can't see properly then let me show you this is the mf guide box so where you want to focus okay this is the mf guide and i always love to leave it on so i can use that when i try to focus my frame all right now go back to Monitoring for display, yes, of course I leave it on. Video priority display, off. Menu guide on. Lens position resume, no. Off. Lens function button settings. Uh, focus stop, maybe. Doesn't really matter. And then I go back to fourth option. Now, under the fourth option, first online manual, uh -huh. custom setting, uh -huh. clock setting. Here is important part. So make sure you set up your clock as per your time zone. Otherwise your audio recorder time and your camera time won't match and it can cause little issue while editing. Okay. World time, of course. You set your world time to home and if you have any like um, daylight saver then make sure you leave it on and off accordingly now because my daylight saver is off right now so I just leave it to off go back Wi-Fi and Bluetooth it really doesn't matter unless you want to transfer your footages or photos through Wi-Fi beep as it is headphone volume here maybe leave it to zero Economy, leave it as it is. Monitor display speed, you can leave it to either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. I'll leave it to 30 frames per second. Live view display speed, 60 frames per second. Night mode as it is. Monitor display as it is. Monitor luminance as it is. Eye sensor as it is. USB mode. Here you can choose the USB mode. Go with any as per your requirement and as I said before system frequency that does matter a lot so if you set the system frequency to PAL this camera won't, will only allow you to shoot cinema 4k in 25 frames per second not 24 frames per second so you know think about it before setting up your camera 
either you want to shoot in 24 frames per second or 25 frames per second. If you are really keen to shoot the feature film for cinema, I would recommend you to go with 24 hertz, which will allow you to shoot exact 24 frames per second, not like 23.987 frames per second, which is going with the NTSC frequency. So NTSC frequency allows you not exit 24 frames per second, but it is 23.987 or 986, sorry, 23.986, which is not exit 24, but it's okay. Let's select NTSC for now, language, English, and go all the way down, doesn't really matter. Now go down. This really doesn't matter. Go down, video guide, slide so nope, playback mode, yes, protect, rating. This all doesn't really matter, so leave it as it is. <coughs> also, under the lens settings, leave it to manual focus instead of autofocus, and the image stabilization system should be off because otherwise your video would be having unwanted jitter and you really won't realize in the small screen when you are shooting but in the post you will feel like you made a huge mistake so leave it off and use solar rig to achieve the handheld quality look in your videos these are the best settings i would recommend to go with to achieve the best cinematic look I hope you enjoy watching this video guys. Please thumbs up and share this video to your social media. Also feel free to comment me in comment box below and check out my description what sort of cameras and gears I use. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and if you already have then thank you very much. I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye.